for showing up um, on this beautiful Fall Foliage Day. Um, my name is Judy Byron. I'm the Adult Program Coordinator. And it's my pleasure to welcome the Honeybee Steel Band. They're awesome. I've known Emily for a number of years, um, other bands, and she was my percussion teacher for a short time there. I play the harp. It's a percussion instrument. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> anyway, the uh, Honeybee Steel Band uh, started, uh, they formed in 2015 in collaboration with um, the Mobilization for Pollinator Survival. And they have a ton of information here flyers for you guys and such. And I really encourage you to pick it up and realize what we're doing to our pollinators because there's what they are what are keeping our world alive, right? And you can read all the signs and such. Um, so Emily is um, a virtuoso pan player. And she studied at the, yeah, I think so. Uh, that was not in there. I know, I put it in there because I want to acknowledge. She, she, and I'm not, I don't want to do a spoiler. Here's a surprise at the end. But she studied at Northern um, Illinois U University and got her master's in steel pan performance. I didn't even know there was such a thing, right? So anyway, um, so kudos. And kudos to the group for, for doing this. They, they uh, do various festivals and uh, parades and such. And it's all to bring awareness to this issue. And I think that's enough said because we want to hear the music and they're going to uh, be available for Q&A after the performance. So um, welcome, everybody, and uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> I just saw my gal. This program is made possible by the generosity of the Friends of the Library. I did have that written down on my cheat sheet. <laughs> and I want to acknowledge the work that they do. They are so supportive of us. And because of them, we have the Honeybee Steel Band. So thank you, friends. And refreshments will follow as well. Thank you. Okay, are you ready? One, two, ready, and.
Zwei? All the foliage out there. So um, this next piece was made popular by, by the Beatles. Um, and it's about the taste of our favorite drink.
This next tune is uh, another little kind of boogie nights disco thing. And what was the drink? The drink? Yeah, we get you should honey. Drink. Oh, a taste of honey. Please drink honey. 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 Okay, that's So um, this next thing, uh, it kind of would be really fun if you guys danced on this one. We, we purposefully left some space here so you can get your boogie. Hush. Boogie on, okay? So, all right, so this next tune is another one of those Boogie Nights kind of tunes, a uh, Fiji's favorite.
Yes. Yes. So um, I just want to I wanted to announce that um, Halloween is coming up, and we're gonna have a big Halloween parade in Montpelier. So I hope that, and we're gonna have a street party. We're gonna have Caribbean dance. There's, if you wanna know more about it, talk to us after the show if you like to dance. There's gonna be people practicing dance to do in the parade with us with Haitian and West African dance teachers. It's gonna be a big spectacle. We're gonna be zombies for the parade. <laughs> Guess why, zombies. So, so we're also playing a tune called Thriller, uh, which of course everyone knows that for Halloween is a, one of our favorite Halloween numbers. So we're gonna do our little Halloween set for you right now, starting with Thriller. And the tune after that is called Zombie, which is um, written by uh, a Nigerian uh, Afrobeat uh, star named Fela. Anika Kuti, uh, and uh, he passed away, I don't know, 20 years ago, but his son, uh, Sean Kuti, Femi Kuti, they're, they're all performing in, uh, you know, a, another version of the band that he started, which had, I don't know, dozens of people in that band, um, Africa 70. Um, they had a lot of dancers in addition to the band members, so that's um, our Afrobeat tune for the day. Uh, which is going to follow Thriller by Michael Jackson. So these are all really great tunes to dance to. Don't sit down. <laughs> Thank you. 
have to do a quick little sound check because we're actually adding a ukulele for this next piece <coughs> to take the place of the rhythm guitar. And we don't need a microphone, right? So yeah, you can turn that off if you want. This is Arovino, one of our lead activists as songwriters for the group and the cause of pollinator protection. Is this a reality people? Uh, well, this would be a really good one for people to dance like zombies, just to give you an idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the movements, Stiff Arms and Stiff Legs. <laughs> 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 just came back from the dead. Right? So, this is a very good one to dance to, so I encourage you all to dance. This is really what you show the slower zombie. The slower zombie? Well, you'll, you'll have to interpret that yourself.
I just want to say this next tune we're playing. Uh, this goes from Nigeria to New Orleans. This is another oh. place. Sorry. <laughs> we, we, we decided to do this tune when one of the Neville brothers passed away, Charles Neville. This was a tune that featured him on saxophone. Uh, we just wanted to pay homage to him as a musician and as one of my favorite bands, the Neville brothers. And this tune happens to be called Yellow Moon, which is, of course, is our favorite color. <laughs> One of the Melissa mm -hmm. must return. Okay, are we ready?
decide what we're going to do about this bush. In my kind of opinion, that we think that the flowers are not doing that no, well. No. Ooh, <laughs> this is such a beautiful Ooh, day. I've got to check my flowers. Ooh. Oh, no. they got bugs all over them. Like, I got dreams. What, what am I going to do? They're going to die. Oh, I got that spray. Mm -hmm. There it is. Seen them a bridge, a little, a little clove bridge. Where, where do they come up with those names? Uh, I, I know it's, it's me and Nick, but you know I gotta save my flowers. What am I gonna do? I, I can't let them die. I just got.
I know me reading all of this, it, it, uh, that, especially that last line there, just struck me what we are doing. I know we all know what we're doing to plan that isn't good, but I just wanted to open this up for if anybody had any questions for the band and information. Yeah, that's, a, that's an incredible statistic. Um, this is a great time to ask. So, um, this yeah, is their Vermont mission. Vermont uses 11.5. It actually uses 12 tons per year. One teaspoon of Munich pesticide is enough to kill 1 billion, 1 billion, 250 million bees. That's one teaspoon of it. That's how deadly it is. Vermont uses 12 tons per year. It's coated on all the seeds for the, the uh, corn and soy crops that are used to feed the dairy farms. Uh, that's why that is such a high statistic. And you can turn around too. Um, another use is the golf courses, okay? So out of those 12 tons per year, I forget how much it is. A ton is 2,000. Okay. So about like one of those tons course. is from golf courses, okay? So just in case, you know, you know people who like to golf, I would say um, in person to go, golf on golf courses that aren't perfect, that might be a little bit better for the environment than a perfect uh, carpet like the living room that happens to kill the, bi the biodiversity in the entire region. Uh, so we don't want them. They're systemic pesticides. They, they go into the plant, into the flower. They stay in the entire plant. They stay in the soil. And the poor little pollinators come to get the pollen out of the flower, and it's poisonous. So um, they do way more than just protect this corn and soy product that's grown. So there's many other uh, ways to farm. Uh, there's other methods of integrated pest management, organic farming. Uh, that would all work. We don't have to use these seeds that are pushed on the dairy industry by Bayer Monsanto Corporation. Um, so uh, we're trying to encourage the, the legislature to pass laws that uh, transition us away from the use of those seeds. So that's the focus of our activism efforts. There's a lot of people that do things like plant pollinator gardens, which are great. But that's not going to solve the problem if we continue to poison the groundwater, poison the crops year after year. And I'd like to mention also that the glyphosate coating on the, it's an, another, that's the neonic I was talking about. The glyphosate's Roundup is also poisonous to bees and birds. It damages their gut. And you might also know that it damages the gut in human beings too. So anything grown, any food produced with that, those seeds is going to have residues of glyphosates in it which causes leukemia and um, uh, all kinds of other problems in people's gut. And there's billions of claims against the, the corporation that makes that uh, hand so, so any questions? It's also um, killing the monarch butterflies. Yes, we have ten percent of the monarch butterflies we have when I was a kid. I'm only wow. thirty nine. Wow. Ninety percent are gone because of glyphosides. One of the reasons. It's not the only cause. And I wanted to say, like, we can get our legislators to do things about this problem. If we all start calling them and saying we want to ban neonicotinoids, we can make a difference. We hired them. We need to call them and tell them what we want. So we're not just going to sit around and wait for them to do something. We want to build a movement in Vermont so that we're all calling our legislators for the next session in April. So I just wanted to add that. Now, does anyone have any questions? Mar Marlon is here from BPR. Rory, you have a question? Yeah, um, yeah what do we, when is the parade going to be? Oh, yeah, there's going to be a parade uh, for Halloween in Montpelier. Um, there's a warm-up for the parade, which is like a street party on the top block of State Street. We're at the intersection of State and Main in Montpelier, uh, where we're going to just uh, help people with costumes who want to join the dancers who are going to be dancing with our zombie tune in the parade. We're also going to play Thriller. And um, we're gonna, you know, have a lot of these signs for people to carry because part of the, part of every time when we are out in public, we're um, 
trying to uh, get the word out to educate people about this issue. Um, yes? What song or songs will we be playing to break? <laughs> okay, zombie. <laughs> zombie. The, the two Halloween themes, thriller and zombie. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so Marlon. Marlon is from Vermont Public Radio, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so I know that uh, losing the bees, well, why, why are why is losing the bees uh, so important? I know that personally we're going to be missing some foods. What foods are we going to be missing from our diet, or how will the world be impacted by a lack of bees? Uh, well, the first foods that are going to go are, are fruits, okay? But bees are responsible for pollinating most crops. So seventy-five percent. Yeah, seventy-five percent of, of the crops. So if you want to have a diet of like. You know, I think potatoes might grow without pollinators. Maybe grain, if you want to just eat bread and let's sort of like go back to a Middle Ages kind of diet, you know, go ahead and kill the bees, you know. But I personally like my avocados, I like my blueberries, I like my berries, I like a whole diversity of uh, fruits and vegetables in my diet. And not to mention, I like to eat a bowl of cereal knowing that it's not poisonous because most of the cereal that you buy in the grocery store actually is poisonous because you'll see it does not say non-GMO. A GMO is kind of the flip side of this. What GMO is uh, is a genetically modified seed that's uh, bred to grow even if it's completely poisoned. That seed will grow into something that resembles wheat and can be used to make cereal, okay? So it's not really a, a, a whole food product because it is, has been changed to withstand toxic pesticides. So you are going to be eating those pesticides if you just go to the grocery store and buy things that don't have that nice little sticker that says non-GMO. So, but the bees are responsible for basically all fruit and vegetables. Yes, all fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And not only if we lose the bees, will we lose all those foods that are pollinated by them? But it's going to affect the food chain. Up. Yes. Right. Very so it's not point. just going to be the foods they pollinate. It's also going to be, you know, whatever feeds off of those foods that are longer available. Like we can't really imagine what it might look like, but it, we don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Yeah, and I, you know, this this problem. I when I first heard about this about five or uh, actually it was about ten years ago that I first heard about this problem. Maybe five or six years ago that I really decided to devote my music and activism to this particular issue. I've always been shocked about why uh, why is it that this issue doesn't get more coverage in the news? And I I, I think it's because that the agriculture lobby is. Uh, and the pharmaceutical industry are all tied up together. Uh, and the pharmaceutical industry is actually largely responsible for pushing these uh, pesticide products onto the agriculture industry. And they have billions of dollars to spend on lobbyists for all the legislators, all the legislative things that go through the state houses in every state in this country and all over the world for that matter. Uh, so it's hard to put up a fight uh, when you know, you know, there's people that are paid full-time salaries to go in there and try to change, you know, make sure that laws protect farmers who are going to use their poisonous products. So it, it makes it uh, really challenging, and we need to build a movement, and we need to get the media to agree to cover this issue. Um, you know, a lot of people. Another problem is, uh, you know, um, Jackie actually yesterday I went to. Uh, a workshop that she led yesterday about money. Money matters. People have investment portfolios and stockbrokers that invest in these industries that make huge profits. So if you happen to have an investment portfolio that's making a lot of money because of the fact that this huge multinational corporation is reaping huge product pr profits off of these, these poisonous products, then it's time to change what you're doing. Uh, because we can't keep supporting those industries. It's intimidating to call yeah. your um, staff worker and tell them what you want them to do with your money, but you can tell them to divest from Bayer. Yeah. Then you can be sure you don't own Bayer. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Bayer creates me. Divest, that's right. Did you have a question, Jennifer? Um, Jean. Um, Jean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, in a capitalist society, you have to vote with your dollar. That's right. Not just with your calling and bugging. Yeah, it's and how you spend your pushing. money, too. And if yeah. you've used your dollars for round up before, you can forgive yourself, because we know you didn't know. <laughs> but now that you know, yeah. if there was a bill that was gonna be passed to try to legislate against neonicotinoids and glyphosate in the agricultural industry, would you call, raise your hand if you mm -hmm. would be willing to make a five minute call to your legislator to ask them to not, to help ban these things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna pass this around because when we're ready with the bill, we're gonna email you and say, okay, here's the big moment. We need the constituents of these um, yeah. people that we've, we've hired. Yeah. into the state house yes. to know because yeah. just five or six or ten or twelve constituents contacting a legislator will make them pay attention to a bill yes. really i've seen Absolutely. it's yeah. amazing yeah. so you're um you know if you're in vermont it doesn't take a lot of voices so yeah that's we what hit you up we won't email you a lot but we'll hit you at the moment when we want you to contact your legislator and if this seems like it's worth three minutes of your time mm -hmm. that's a huge act you can take yeah, I want to say something too, is that we have a special uh, role as a tiny state like Vermont, where our voices can be heard much more than they can in a huge state like California, for example, uh, or a huge state like Illinois that has a lot of this chemical farming going on. Um, we, we have a, a possibility to make a difference. And if our state is able to pass some rules, then other states will follow suit. And um, actually, there are other states that are a little ahead of us in their laws against some of these pesticides that have birds. I think Maryland is a little bit ahead. But Vermont really has that potential because it's small, because we have a lot of contact with our legislators through town meetings and things like that. So don't be shy about going to the Vermont State of Vermont website. You can see what's happening in the legislature and look it up just in the search rate neonic. Where's the thing that says neonicotinoid? It's a, it's a, it's a, um, they're purposefully intimidating words. But if you just write neonic, N-E-O, yeah, hold that up. N-E-O-N-I-C, if you put that in the search, that will bring you to any legislation that has to do with neonicotinoids. Okay, and similar with glyphosate, uh, that's, not quite as intimidating as neonicotinoid, it's G L Y P H. O S A. Yes. So it's good to know those words. Neonic. Neonic. Yeah, just like sure. say neonics. Those are our, our two arch enemies. And Europe did ban neonicotinoids a few years ago. Yes. But not us, right? Yeah. We're usually and they're bad. actually having a hard time upholding that. It's similar to the way. Vermont passed the, the rule to, to ban, uh, to, to force uh, GMO to, products yeah, to be yeah. Thank you. The GMO, the la I'm like, GMO labeling. They wanted a geo GMO labeling to happen. But, but we passed that, but the corporations just put kickback so much that instead of labeling foods, this is tainted by GMOs, we now have the little thing that says non-GMO that we can put on any product that is, is not using genetically modified seeds and therefore use toxic pesticides. So, yeah, watch for that little GMO, non-GMO label. It has a butterfly on it. I think we're done. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have refreshments. Thank you to the friends for yummy cookies and cider. Help yourself.